In this video, I'll be taking apart the AGM G2 Guardian. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. What makes this smartphone special isn't just the rugged housing or the IP rating. It's the thermal monocular imaging camera, which is claimed to be a first on a smartphone. With the thermal monocular detection range on this phone, you can get heat signatures up to 500 meters. You can also choose between manual or autofocus to help you get a clear picture in different situations. And it can measure temperatures between 0 to 150 degrees Celsius. Not only does it have the thermal imaging camera, it's also equipped with a 20 megapixel infrared night vision camera. This phone would be great for hikers, hunters, or anyone in law enforcement. Alright, so let's jump in and take a look at the inside of this phone. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Next, we'll need to pry the screen off. And the adhesive holding the screen down is extremely strong, so we'll need to use some isopropyl alcohol and some Prito to help us gain leverage so we can get the isopropyl alcohol underneath the screen. So it eats away at the adhesive, making it easier to pry the screen off. There's a cover over the connector for the screen cable, which is held down by a Phillips screw that needs to be removed. Here's a better look at the back of the screen. There are now 15 more Phillips screws which need to be removed. Here's a better look at the aluminum mid plate. On this side, there's a graphite film to help transfer heat. And the proximity sensor and notification LED are located on top, covered by the rubber gasket. Looking at the other side, we can see the flex cables on either side for the buttons, as well as a copper heat pipe to help transfer heat. We can also see the flex cable on top, which leads to the proximity sensor and notification LED. And here's a look at the outline of the copper heat pipe. The battery cable cannot be disconnected, followed by the rest of the flex cables. There's also a red and black coaxial cable on the bottom left side of the board, which need to be disconnected by popping them off. There are four Phillips screws which are holding down the main board. There's one more flex cable on the right side of the board. There are more flex cables and coaxo cables underneath the board which need to be disconnected. Looking at this side of the board, we can see a 32 megapixel front facing camera, the SIM card and memory card reader, and a lot of thermal paste on top of the shield. Once the shields have been removed, we can see the processor and RAM, as well as some more thermal paste over the processor. Looking at the other side, we can see the main 108 megapixel back camera, and this camera does not have OIS or optical image stabilization. The flex cable for this camera is located directly underneath, 
So to remove it, all you would have to do is disconnect it and pop it off. Here's a better look at that. Here's another look with the shield on this side removed. There are seven Phillips screws on the bottom which need to be removed. Here's a better look at the charger port. The other end of the black coaxial cable needs to be disconnected from the subboard. Here's a better look at that. Here's a look at the headphone jack. There are two additional Phillips screws which are holding down the battery. Here's a better look at the 7000 milliamp hour battery, which is basically two 3500 milliamp hour batteries put together. With the battery removed, we can see the wireless charging coil underneath, as well as the NFC antenna, which attached to the main board with this flex cable. There are numerous antenna boards on this phone, connected to the main board by these coaxial cables. There's an antenna board on the bottom, there's two on this side of the frame, as well as two more on the other side of the frame. This flex cable is for the primary microphone on the bottom corner of the phone, which is held in place with a cure in place gasket, and the vibrator motor is located over here. There are eight more Phillips screws which need to be removed. Here's a better look at the thermal imaging camera. There's one more Phillips screw which needs to be removed. We now have a look at this large 35mm 3.5 watt speaker. The 2 megapixel macro camera is located here. And there's a 100 lumens torch light on top. The 20 megapixel night vision camera is located on this side. And the LED flash is located on the other side. Both of which are held down with some adhesive. The earpiece speaker is located on top and it's held in place with a cure in place gasket. As well as a secondary microphone. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 3.5 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the device.
Once everything's back in place, power on the phone and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.